So I saw this article in a, one of the woodturning magazines, a guy named Dave Springett had an article showing how to make this, and I said, oh, I'm gonna try that. And uh, it's actually quite simple to make. It may not look it, but it really is simple. If I can do it on the first shot, it's, it's simple. I made a couple of models. This one I tried coloring, as I mentioned before, and I really don't like it. It's too blotchy, but the appearance is, I guess, okay or different. Uh, when I, I brought this one to my uh, school, I brought it to the art classes, and I showed it to the students, and I said to them, I said, here's an object that doesn't do anything, you just look at it, therefore it's art. And the art teacher, I don't think, appreciated that comment. <laughs> <laughs> so let me move this before it falls apart again. Now, what it's made up of is Half pieces, semicircles like this, hollow on the inside, like a square tube, and it starts off basically with this. Just a ring that you cut in half. So you have a, whoops. You make the ring. When the ring is made, you cut it in half, and you glue the two halves together, and you wind up with a semicircular, rectangular, hollow arc. So, if you want to just see one up close, just pass that around. Uh, the blanks that you start with are just pieces of flat wood, like this, on a backing, with a paper joint in between them. And the paper joint is used so that you can make the ring and then remove it fairly simply. I'm going to start off by showing how to make a paper joint in case people don't know how to. It is surprisingly strong. You would think, no, oh, it's paper, how strong can it be? It really holds very well. So, if you're going to make a paper joint, it's a sandwich. Wood, glue, paper, glue, wood. So I have here wood and Newspaper. Okay. So I'm going to make a sandwich like that. Now, the two surfaces that you're going to join should be reasonably flat because you want the contact between the, the wood, glue, paper, glue, wood to be fairly consistent. So I just picked some pieces out of the pile at home and uh, they were a little bit curved, but the two curves in this case match. So I'm just going to just demonstrate how to make a paper joint. So, I'm going to paper here and here. These, two, these are the matching surfaces. I have some very special equipment here. A wet rag. And, oh come on. And it's just ordinary uh, carpenter's, uh, carpenter's glue. glue, that's all. So, you know, make sure I have the two correct surfaces. Yeah, okay. So, I'm just going <coughs> to spread the glue on it. And use the magic spreader tool. Okay, so, glue, glue, paper. So, first step, just put the piece of paper on there and just sort of you know, iron it, press it in. You don't have to be too, too fussy. Then the other piece on top. This one I'll just give a little wiggle. And a couple of clamps, whatever system you have, or just a brick or something just to keep it tight, and that's it, done. Okay? So you leave it, like overnight, make sure it's good and dry, and then you trim off the excess paper, and then you have your paper joint, which is what you see in here. 
So, now, once we have the paper joint made, I'm going to mount it on the lathe. I made these with um, a glue it on tenon. You can use a face plate, whatever you use to mount it. Safety equipment, safety glasses absolutely required. You don't need the shield because you're not turning that fast. Uh, these, I'm not sure, they should be all right, I think. Maybe not, right? Yep. <laughs> so hang on, I have a small one here. Let's try this. Ta-da! Okay. Now, when you're making the the uh, the blank here, you need two circular pieces. They should have flat faces again, so that the faces uh, contact the paper properly. And you just do the same thing. You put spread the glue around, put them together. You can even put a if you mount it on the lathe, you can put your tailstock up here for support and let it sit overnight till it dries. Okay, so, I'm ready to start. A um, couple of things you have to do. You have to make sure the faces, the outside face here is dead flat as much as you can, and that the uh, edge here is round and flat and then perpendicular, okay? Because what you're trying to make, come on. You want to make these rings, and you want the inside of the ring to have that profile. In other words, equal thickness, wall, bottom, wall, and 90 degree angles inside. So you want it nice and symmetric. That's the hard part, is to get it at exactly 90 degrees. So you've got to start somewhere. So I'm going to start off by truing up this face, uh, the, uh, the edge. And then I'll true up the face a little bit, get rid of some of this old varnish. Alright, let's see. see the blue line. It's important that I see where it is when I come to separate the, uh, the ring.
And I'm just going to check to see if my face is reasonably flat. Just a little bit off the edge, okay. So that's fairly flat. Now I just want to make sure that the top is, again, flat and perpendicular. And I can see right away it isn't, but I'll measure it anyway. So I can see right away that there's, it's on, the top here is uneven. So I'm going to work on that. to be identical, and I want the bottom to be the same thickness as the wall. So I've got to do some measurements. So, from the glue line, can I see it? Yes, there it is, okay. So I'm looking at 21 millimeters. Okay, 21. I'm going to make the walls five millimeters deep, uh, thick. Okay. Okay, that's five millimeters. Now, how wide do I want it? Well, at least the width of my tools. So I can't be less than this. It's going to be uh, eleven millimeters. Do you say 11? Well, it's 21 mil thick. Oh no, that's okay, that's all right. I'm going to make it... 21 minus 10. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to make it 11 millimeters across. So, 5 plus 11 is 16. I need the line at 16 millimeters. 16 millimeters, same thing. Make the line. And then I want a five millimeter wall, so 16 and five is 21. So I want 21 millimeters for the outside. 21, okay. And the line of 21. All right, here we go. Okay, so there's my markings. And we'll set it back to the correct way. All right, so we're going to start hollowing out or getting, making that groove. I tried various tools, and what worked well was scrapers. I hope I didn't make it too narrow. You do not start it with a parting tool, like that parting cut? You can. You can make a, see, a parting tool, you got to do the whole thing with a parting tool, but the trouble is, on the outer, uh, outer edge, as the parting tool goes in, the edge of the uh, groove starts to rub on these wings here and moves the tool away. So you go down and it's not, and it's not parallel or perpendicular, you go off at an angle. You can fix that later if you do it. So let me just start off with this then. Uh, hang on, everything okay here? Yeah. I'm 
the other side. Now, you could just keep doing this with a parting tool and just keep moving in, but you have to watch your depth because you don't want to go too far. I want a five millimeter um, bottom. And what did I have before, 21 of it? So 21 minus five is 16. I have to go down 16 millimeters on the inside here. So this works well, I think, I hope. scraper that I made from an old tool. Uh, I forget what it was. I just ground the edge, the front edge to a scraper shape. And I ground the sides to a scraper shape also so I can <coughs> put it into my groove and just go left, right, and it'll adjust the width of the groove. And to measure the depth, I find this fairly handy, tire gauge. So right now I'm at like seven, and I want to go to what did I say before? Sixteen? Yeah, sixteen. So I'll do my final measurements with the proper ruler, but in the meantime I'll use this just as a guide. <coughs> it's hot. Oh, jeez. Okay. Now, that's squealing because it's touching like uh, both sides. So I'm going to make the groove a little bit wider using the sides of my uh, scraper. to be as precise as you can. I mean, the first time you do it, it may not work, but you try to make it as pre precise as you can. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm 16 millimeters deep. Now, I want to make the walls orientation, right? So I want to make them the same. So I've got five here. I'm pretty sure I have five at the bottom. I want to make sure my angles are at 90 degrees. And I used this tool, the uh, little ruler, but I can't get it in there properly. So I took this little metal bar and I just lay it on the side like that. And I can get that into the bottom of the, um, of the groove. 
and I can check, but visually, does the bar touch the wall all the way down? <coughs> Okay, I think this side is okay. The other side, I haven't reached my line yet, so I haven't gone uh, in uh, towards the center far enough, so now I'll do that. I can still see the line. Tastes great. Yeah, a check for perpendicularity. Uh, actually, I can see it. say it's okay. All right. Now, so there's the two, the outer wall, the inner wall, the groove. Now I've got to s separate the ring. So on the, the third line that I drew, that's going to be the outside of the inner part of the ring, I have to go all the way down and into the glue joint. So in other words, I have to go down 21 millimeters or 22 millimeters. So, uh, let's start with the party tool. make a mark of your um, scraper at the right depth you know about where you are instead of having to measure all the time I didn't do that See if I can spot the paper joint, and I can't yet. Oh, I think I just, I think I just found it. Hang on, let's find out the net. Sometimes a little piece of paper comes flying out. So, what am I here now? I'm at 21 at 22. So I should probably. I can see the paper in the bottom of this particular groove. So I'm through, except that one spot. I'm going to just, actually, I'm just going to use a different uh, parting tool. <coughs> this one is ground at a slight angle, so there's a point, like a sharp point. I'm just going to cut through the paper, make sure I'm through the paper joint all the way around. Okay. 
now comes at the birth. So you want to take this off. The instruction said, use a knife. Well, I opened my kitchen drawer. I didn't see a knife. The first thing I saw was this. Okay, so I'll, I'll use that. You want something wide, um, because if you use like a chisel, chisel is narrow, and when you pry it, you're gonna damage the edge. So a knife works well. <coughs> now, um, hang on a second, this locks, right? So, okay, don't touch the control. Okay. So, put the blade, the, the knife edge, in the on the paper joint and start tapping start tapping these <coughs> got an old knife it would work well too maybe don't pull it out just keep going down. I try that, and sometimes it gets stuck, so I just have to keep pulling it out. It depends. Sometimes it, I've had one where it, it came off on the very first blow. So, do, so. Jim, what you do in this case, make yourself a few, a few little wedges of wood as it opens up. Oh yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you check with your wife before you started doing the cleaning? <laughs> no. Okay, so there it is, and the edge here is a bit rough, it doesn't matter, you're going to sand that, okay? Now, I forgot to do one thing. Uh, I, need the, I need the center, so I know where to cut it, so I'm just going to guess. I should have drawn a center line while it was on the lathe, and I forgot. So I'm just going to estimate where I think the center is. Uh, where's my marker? Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to say it's there. Okay. <laughs> you have your ring that's shaped. You want to separate it and put it together. If you make this way shorter than that, I mean, you can use it, but it's going to be less than a half a circle. It'll be like, I don't know, less. You can do it. I mean, who's going to stop you? <laughs> okay, so... I use a bandsaw at home, but this will do fine. Now comes the moment of truth. Because... You know, you're looking for this, right, the, the perpendicular angles on the inside, and you can't really tell until you put it together. It's not that bad. Actually, when you, you, you glue it together, then you would go into the um, uh, rectangular part with a file or sandpaper, and you would even out just the edge here. You don't have to worry too much about the inside, you can't see it, but just the edge, you want to make it like square. Okay. And sanding, well obviously you got paper on the outside here, I just use a big sanding board and I just sand everything off. So that's what happened to, to these, that there was paper on the outside here, just sanded it off on the sanding board. And then, I haven't cut this one apart yet, but it should be alright. So you've made one. When you glue them together, See, I wasn't like a, I didn't measure my center properly. These these ends should be closer together, but it doesn't matter. You can always adjust it afterwards. When you're gluing it together afterwards, make sure or focus more on the inner surface, the inner joint here, because it's hard to sand on the inside sometimes. So focus your attention on the joint on the inside here. If that lines up properly, so should the outside. Okay. But I will focus on the inside because that's where I have most trouble sanding. And once you've got it sanded and glued, there's your half ring. Now, you make another one. Okay, so you would take this piece here. 
even up the face, make sure that it's you know perpendicular, and do the same thing again. And you can do the same thing, the same dimensions, same measurements, or different. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. And once you have the rings, or the cut pieces, then you start playing around with the design. So you lay them out, and you start saying, okay, I want this one here, and I want that one here, and this one's gonna be over here someplace. And you just play around with the design until you have something that you, you like, and then you put it together. Now, putting it together, as I just found out today, is somewhat problematic because the joints in here are, as I found out, quite fragile. And what I did in here, on this one, I put short little dowels with uh, carpenter's glue and glued it together, and I put a little drop of epoxy in between. It didn't hold. It fell apart in the box. Um, so I would do redo this with, whoops, see? <laughs> I would sand some of this away here, get back to raw wood, and re-glue it with epoxy. When you made that another part, did you make sure that the outer diameter is the same as the inner diameter of the other one? These are not, because when you cut... Yeah, you don't get... You don't get the same diameters, yeah, because this is one piece, okay? You have to get them from another board. Yeah, so if you wanted to make Let's say you made this one, then you want the second one who, uh, with an outer diameter exactly like this. You take a second blank like that, you true it up, and you start to turn it and use this one as a template till it fits. Then you go ahead and you make your second ring. The third ring, you go back to your first piece and, do, and continue the process. And you can make like, well depending on the size of the piece, like four totally, perfectly concentric circles. I didn't do that, I just took one piece and made three or four rings, and they don't, of course they don't match, because you lose the wood in between. That is the reason why, that is the reason why you separate. You have trouble gluing them, because... Oh, I'm sorry? I said that is the reason why you have trouble gluing them. They yeah, match, well, they don't match. if they really, really match, I have a bigger glue surface. Okay, I know that. But on this one, for instance, I can see the diameter, well, it's hard to see from where you are maybe, but I can see the diameters here are not quite the same. So my glue surface is somewhat less than ideal. So I'm gonna rethink that, maybe put a bigger plug or a bigger dowel in there. Uh, on the green one, I had anticipated that, so there's a dowel running from here right through all, all the pieces, okay? And then I colored the dowel so it doesn't appear to be so uh, obvious. And again, there's um, uh, epoxy in there. I think this one will be more solid. I think. In uh, each ring, when you in like between, what's the thickness of the tool you use? Uh, I'm sorry, the, the tool that I use? Because you, you it's very uh, a lot of space. But don't you uh, use a thin parting tool? No. You could, yeah, you could. I mean, you just... Like that, that would be pretty much the same. If you use a thin parting tool, it's you're, you're going to get your circles closer together. Yeah. Right? But they or, won't be perfect. Or you leave, a, you leave a dowel in between each one. You leave a space with a dowel. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, once you have the pieces, uh, the, the semicircular pieces, you lay them on the table and start playing around with the, uh, the look. And if you want dowels like going through them and having one piece above the other. But I think a thin yeah. parting tool would be the best thing. I'm sorry? Like, a, a, like a thin parting tool would be the best thing. Well, okay. it's yeah. It's quicker. It's a lot quicker to separate them. Could be, yeah. I just use what I had. And you, so you just make this kind of stuff. That's all. <laughs> That's it.